Hello, beautiful internet family. My name is Dan Davis, and I'm the creative director here at danstube.tv, as well as the Fearless Drone Academy, which is the ultimate online drone course for beginners. And today we've got a really big update for the DJI Mavic 3, and it might be time for you to now upgrade to the Mavic 3. With this new update, they have brought a bunch of new features to this already impressive drone. You'll see the full release notes pop up on screen now. I'm not gonna be covering everything because there's just so much in this new update, which is really exciting that they're still continuing to update the Mavic 3, but I'm gonna be focusing on a few of the main updates in this video here today. The first notable update, which is very exciting, is they put a lot of love into the telecamera. So previously there was the explore mode, which was a standalone thing that you had to click on, and then it gave you the options for all of the different zooming functionality there. Now, the telecamera is a native seven times zoom, so the actual lens itself is a seven times zoom lens, and the other options are all digital. So basically, when it goes to all the different modes, including the 28 times, uh, that is just digital zoom at that point but the seven times is that native point of the lens, and that's where you're getting the crispiest, most detailed video and photo options. So what they've done is they've added an option now in the flight screen where you can just literally tap on seven times. You don't have to go into the standalone explore mode. You still have that as an option though. Explore mode has actually been moved to a different menu when you choose photo and video and the other modes, you'll see the explore mode pop up there. But now you have the option to just tap on seven times. Now it does take about a second or maybe a couple of seconds for the actual drone to switch over to that tele camera, but now you're immediately in that seven times mode. You don't have to click on the explore mode and then go through all the different zooming options to get to seven times. They've now made it so it's a lot more functional and it definitely makes the most sense to have this as an option. Now the other thing they've done with the tele camera is they've implemented it more into the user interface. So like I said, we've got that seven times option on the flight screen and now you can actually play with all of the different photo and video modes. So that means that the video options go up to 50 frames per second in 4K and up to 50 frames per second in 1080p. So you've got more options there than you ever have before, which is great. You also have all the control that you need now over ISO, shutter speed, and all the other options as well that you typically didn't have available. So again, very exciting to see that. We've also seen a few more of the photo modes or actually all of the photo modes available now in the tele camera option. So you can play around with single shot, AEB, burst, time shots, and it also supports RAW as well as JPEG plus RAW photo format. And again, you still have control over ISO and shutter speed and all those other options. So they've really updated it here to make it a fully fleshed out functional seven times tele camera option. And I think they really listened to the community because a lot of people were loving it, but it just seemed like an add on. It almost felt like they did it as an option, but now it seems to actually have the love that it really did deserve. You will notice that I've got a few different shots here where there are boats coming through and previously you'd have to, you know, fiddle around and tap on the explore mode, then zoom in multiple times to get to the seven times zoom. Now you can just tap on seven times straight when the subject is in the center of the frame, which I've got the crosshair there to tell me where the center point is. And then straight when I tap on seven times, I know the subject's going to be bang in the center there. And it means I can capture the shot a lot quicker without any hassle or playing around with the, uh, the settings there, which is really, really nice to have. Like I said before, the explore mode is still available. It's just tucked away into the actual uh, shooting options that we have now. So if we're in photo, video, or whatever it may be, that obviously allows the zoom option. We can then click on the explore mode and it will enable all of the different zoom lengths at that point. Like I said, on the flight screen, you have either the one times, which is just the default, which will be the actual Hasselblad camera system, or you have the seven times, which then goes to the tele camera. So that little delay that we noticed is basically because it's switching from one camera to the other camera. Now, when you go into explore mode, it's the exact same experience that you would expect from the explore mode. I will have some comparisons here to see if we actually notice any improvements. I don't know if they've had any major improvements to like the digital zoom, for example, but the seven times looks as crispy as it ever has. It's just a lot more convenient to access. And then we have all those other shooting options for the photos as well as videos. 
So that means that we're just gonna be able to get a lot more out of the tele camera. One thing that I did notice that was actually a really nice welcome addition is with the explore mode, when you press and hold on the zoom option that you're on, it pulls up that little toggle wheel. So you can scroll through the different zoom lengths at that point. And amazingly enough, they've actually added little nuances here to tell us exactly what that zoom point is, the equivalent of it. And it's just a lot more visually pleasing and gives us a little bit more control. I find it's a little bit smoother almost. It doesn't seem to kind of jump between the different modes. It just seems to be a little smoother here. And that visual cue of uh, what the zoom equivalent is, is um, just a nice welcome addition that not many people have mentioned, but you can do that by pressing and holding. And then you can basically swipe up or down to scroll through the different options there. So overall, I was really impressed with the tele camera updates. They've really given it some love now and there's a lot more functionality and options within it. So it's really great to see that they've taken the love and the attention for the tele camera because it definitely did deserve the love and attention. Now moving on to another thing that was very exciting for me, they added another option for slow motion. So now we can shoot 1080p up to 200 frames per second. And amazingly enough, the water was extremely choppy today. So I had a good opportunity to see some boats just launching through the water and it does look incredible. That 1080p at 200 frames per second is extremely usable and it does give you a unique perspective. I've been testing out the Mini 3 Pro on the channel. I do find that the slow motion at 1080p isn't that crispy. Like the quality of the video is not amazing as opposed to this larger sensor here. It definitely does make a difference having that larger sensor and the improved sensor that the Mavic 3 has. So 1080p at 200 frames per second, very, very impressive. Nice and easy to select as well. And again, just impressed with what they've done here. Was not expecting another option for slow motion, but again, it just brings more life to the Mavic 3 and gives us as the user more opportunity to have creative control. Another thing that they added is the HLG color profile, which is something that we've seen in previous prosumer drones and high-end drones from DJI. It took a while to come out on the Mavic 3, but a lot of people love this color profile. The dynamic range is beautiful. The detail in the image is great, and it's such a flat color profile. Profile, it just gives us a lot more control to play around in post-production and really color grade the image to how we want it to look. I did get a little bit confused here. Basically you set it up in the settings. So you select HLG. And then when I went back to the flight menu, I tested out the seven times zoom, not thinking or even noticing that HLG had been disabled at that point. So the HLG option is only available for the Hasselblad camera. From what I can see, the tele camera doesn't have that option. That makes a lot of sense though. But just some of the footage here you'll see when I go to that seven times zoom, it automatically sets it to the normal color profile. And then when you put it back to the one times, I can then and set it up in the HLG color profile. And you'll see some side by sides here, or you'll see like a bit of a wipe to show you what HLG looks like straight out of the camera. And then what you can do when you play around with the colors, you can definitely make it pop and you can bring a lot more out of the image. I will say that the normal color profile though is fantastic on its own. The colors are great and most people will be happy with normal, but it's cool that we've got the HLG option now as well. They also added HLG and D-Log to the master shots and quick shot modes. Asteroid is the only quick shot mode that you can't enable HLG or D-Log, but it's cool to see again that they've given a little bit more love to master shots and quick shots. It finally feels like it's a fully kind of polished product now, and they just keep adding to it, which is really exciting. Moving on to a feature that I've been missing personally, and it for some reason has not been available on my Mavic 3. A bunch of other people have actually told me it's the same for them and they could not set it up. But now I can finally access the directional active track mode. So previously when I was on active track, there's the option to choose the direction that you want to track from, but my drone would just not fly in that direction. It would stay wherever it was and continue tracking, which is great, at least it didn't stop, but it wouldn't change the direction. So now with this new update, it actually seems to be working for me, which is great. Initially, it kind of sits there when I'm not moving, but straight when I start moving, the drone then adjusts to where I've told it to uh, capture the image from. So that's really cool. That's something I really wanted to see, and I'm glad that it's available now, finally for me. I'm sure other people out there will be relieved to see that this is available for them. And the final feature I want to cover here today, which is actually the one I'm most excited about for some reason, it's called the Nifty Mode. Now, basically, this is a new active track mode. Straight when Bypass is enabled, which is the A-Pass 5.0, you can go into just the normal active track mode, which works fantastically well. But now they've added this Nifty Mode. And as the name suggests, it's going to track you in more of a nifty manner. 
Now what this means is that it's actually going to create more of a cinematic or more of a subtle movement, but it also does take more risks, which is very interesting. So as you enable this mode, there's a warning that pops up and it basically says there's a higher chance of collision. So it's clearly doing riskier maneuvers than it would in the active track mode. I was in a very tucked in spot with a bunch of trees around and I found that it did a fantastic job. Yes, I was walking most of the time, but even when I started jogging there, I found that it did a fantastic job. I could see all the sensors popping up on my screen to tell me, yep, I can notice everything around me, but it definitely did some little subtle movements, like it kind of changed its altitude slightly or it would do different maneuvers to continue while avoiding everything. And it just seemed extremely smooth and nifty as the name suggests. I also changed the direction of the tracking while this nifty mode was enabled and I found that it did a great job regardless of which way the drone was facing. It always kept me in the middle, it always kept up with me and it calculated the movements so much quicker than any other drone I've tested. It just did a really great job like regardless of what was going on and what was in the environment it would think really fast and it would move around the obstacle and just create such a dynamic viewing angle. And I found that Nifty was slightly better. I won't say it's significantly better because there's no major difference here that I've noticed. I'm not like, whoa, this is insane. It probably would be slightly different if I was doing faster maneuvers and there was maybe more in the environment. But just based on my experience with active track and then going over to the Nifty mode, I did find that there were some subtle improvements here and it did seem a lot smoother and more dynamic and it definitely created a different kind of of cinematic look to the tracking videos. So that's everything I'm covering in this video. Remember there's an entire release log, so check that out. You can see all of the release notes and the actual log of basically what they added here. I was very impressed though. All of the features I tested worked flawlessly and the Mavic 3 is now such an amazing drone. With all of these recent updates, it's just become a powerhouse and a beast of the sky. So this might be the time to get yourself the Mavic 3 if you were considering it, but holding off, waiting for different features. It might be the time now because there are some crazy options and it's such a fantastic drone. So thank you so much for watching everyone, I really do appreciate your support, I will chat to you in the next video, and peace out.